sleep, please. Um, so <laughs> thank you for joining us uh, today, um, like midday in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, for TED in uh, Florida. Tampa actually is like eight in the evening uh, and everywhere else you are joining, we appreciate. Uh, I'm living in yesterday, so you guys are <laughs> yes, futuristic as far as I'm concerned. So, um, so before getting to the interesting part that Ted is going to talk about, uh, this is um, Oakland BI user group. It is called Oakland, but it is online, so everyone can pretty much join. Uh, we have a meetup page. Uh, make sure to join us in the meetup page so that the next meetings uh, you'll get notified if there's a meeting. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you are in Oakland, we are planning for something called Analytics Friday that will be in 22nd of July. That is in person. We might do it also hybrid, still thinking about it. But if you are not in Oakland, we still do these user groups on a monthly basis. OK, so that's pretty much me. I'm handing it over to Ted and special thanks, Ted, for doing this. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, great to be uh a world away from you and being able to kind of uh <laughs> present a session i've done lots of times thank you very much to reza i've known reza for a yeah. long time you know quite often i feel like i could brag that you know i know the you know the smartest bi guy in new zealand or the su southern hemisphere but <laughs> then again he's not even as smart as his wife so he's not even the smartest person in his marriage. but i digress <laughs> anyway i thought about what to say. i thought about that can joke so Forgive me, I, I think your wife liked it quite a bit. Anyway, today what we're going to talk about is working with Power BI, you know, and writing code. So we're going to look at the API to export reports. And this is something that, um, you know, I put together a session for a monthly webinar I do called Power BI Dev Camp uh, last November when the features we're looking at right now went GA. You know, so what we're going to look at you know, as we go through this uh, session, okay, here's a little propaganda for, uh, you know, Power BI Dev Camp. If uh, I go to this portal right here, you know, once again, it's uh, since I got to Microsoft, I kind of started uh, this webinar series, you know, and so if you go to www.powerbidevcamp.net, you can see the sessions, you know, so just I tried to kind of do a 60 minute, uh, you know, deep developer topic once a month and you can see that you know there's quite a few that i've done you know so this one right here if i go look at you know using the power bi export api uh and the other kind of neat thing about the portal is if if you go to the portal and you go look up this session you know here are the slides i'm going to show for tonight uh you know here are two different developer samples uh you know if i click on one of these links you know also uh if i really blow the session tonight you know i have a much better recording of the session uh from power bi dev camp you know, but if you want to download the slides, just the PPTX file. Also, if you click on one of these links right here, uh, you know, it will take you to, you know, where I post my samples in GitHub. Um, so if I look at kind of Power BI Dev Camp, um, you know, once again, I work for Microsoft, but I find if I just kind of um, publish my samples as community samples, it cuts through a lot of bureaucratic red tape and people approving things. So I just kind of get things in customers' hands faster by doing this. Uh, you know, so I have quite a few samples. Uh, and the two that we're going to look at tonight, uh, you know, are first this one, which is export report to file. So just to keep it simple, this is a C Sharp uh, console application that just kind of goes through the, you know, the basics of getting an access token and with the sample you know that we're going to show here you know while i, I don't want to kind of drill down uh you know into um security you know i have a token manager class right here and up at the top you know i've made it so you can kind of switch back and forth between you know using a service principal uh and using you know just a regular uh user account you know but what we're going to look at you know is the code that's inside um this one power bi export manager class so once again i just wanted to put together you know lots of very concise examples uh you know to show various ways that you can use this api you know if you're not using c sharp uh you're using powershell you know you should be able to achieve anything i've done here it's just got to have to know the power bi you know the invoke power bi rest 
uh, you know, a PowerShell approach. Uh, one example I probably won't demo, but I'll explain is that if you are using AppOwns data embedding, you know, meaning that you're as a developer using Power BI to embed reports in a custom application, and we have a, a mode that allows ISVs to embed reports even when Power BI doesn't know who the users are. Um, you know, so that's what we call app owns data embedding and things get to be a little trickier. So I put together kind of one of the samples there. I'll probably just kind of go through a couple of the slides and explain this uh, second. Okay, but here's now the, the, the flow that we're gonna go through. Let's just kind of take a second to introduce the Power BI export API. Uh, and then, you know, we're, there's some details that are specific to regular Power BI reports. You know, those that you create with Power BI desktop and PBX files. Uh, there's ways to export paginated reports. And there's a lot of motivation when you get to exporting, you know, to kind of use paginated reports instead of Power BI reports, you know, because of, you know, their uh, uh, pixel perfect qualities and because, you know, they can have a, a table that extends across pages and still getting the, you know, the page footers and headers that you want. Um, you know, we'll also explain the, um, you know, the app owns data scenario. Uh, probably won't drill into that just because I suspect the audience isn't all uh, up on app owns data embedding. Uh, but then there's also the possibility of, you know, exporting reports uh, using Power Apps as well. Okay. Now, first of all, let's kind of differentiate between two different kinds of reports. So there's the reports that we think about as Power BI reports, you know, those that you create with Power BI Desktop, you kind of save the project as a PBX file. So we can export those type of reports using three formats. You know, you can export them as PDF, PNG, or, you know, basically PowerPoint. And what you'll see, if you move over to paginated reports, there's a much greater, you know, uh, flexibility in what your output is. You know, so you might want to have a table and you just want to basically crank it out as a CSV file. Uh, or you want to create a report that you can open in Power BI, but yet open also, you know, export it to Excel and then have Excel users use it without, you know, any dependencies and going back to Power BI. You just kind of want to export the raw data, you know, into a XLSX file. You know, so once again, knowing the two different formats, yeah, you know, the other thing about Power BI reports, you know, is that it's a, here's an old acronym that, you know, we used when I was a kid, uh, WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get. So when you export a Power BI report, if you have a table visual that has a scroll bar, you're not going to see the data, you know, that's, you, you have to use the scroll bar to get, you know, it's going to export exactly what you see on the screen. You know, so quite often we find that Power BI reports just aren't the suitable thing to use for exporting, and we have to move to paginated reports. You know, so I'm going to say that, you know, if you are someone who wants to sell yourself as a Power BI professional, I can do it all. You know, you definitely need to be able to create regular reports and paginated reports and know what scenarios, you know, each one is, is better in. Okay, so with that background, um, you know, we have Power BI Desktop. And my guess is that, you know, many of you use Power BI Desktop, you've created reports. You know, and once again, the thing to remember is when you export, you're going to either export to a PDF, you know, or uh, a PNG, or basically PNGs that are automatically, you know, inserted into PowerPoint slides. Uh, you're going to get a WYSIWYG experience. You know, so what you see on the screen is going to match exactly what you get in the exported file, which might be great, or it might not. You know, so what we don't get with this style uh, is things like uh, tables and matrices, you know, that have scroll bars uh, or things that have to go across pages and you want to have page headers and page footers. So, so once again, you know, if you are going to, you know, really make the most of the export API, it's likely that you're going to have to, you know, learn how to build or get your friend to build, you know, the, the paginated report, which we use Power BI Report Builder. Okay, it's not a session on, you know, either of these tools. I just want to point out that, you know, we need to kind of use the right tool for the type of export that we want. Okay. Uh, also note here that, um, you know, we have in Microsoft, I didn't create it. Some other people on the PBI CAT team, along with Peter Myers, created a paginated report in a day class. 
and they kind of went nuts. They have 25 different videos. You know, some are five minutes, others are 12 minutes. You know, but if you've never done paginated report building and you need a quick start, you know, this is definitely, you know, what I would recommend as, you know, the, the learning you use to ramp up on this. Okay, let's go ahead. And next thing I want to point out is that for the demos that I'm going to do, you might have to tweak some tenant level settings. You know, so uh, in particular, uh, you know, you can see down here, um, and maybe it would be good if I, you know, let's go over here, let's go to Power BI. And one thing to note is that these settings that I need to do all my demos are not turned on by default. And if you're not the tenant admin, you can't turn them on. You know, if you have an environment that you're able to turn these on, you can. You know, but as we go down to export and sharing, uh, you know, you want to be able to export to Excel, to CSV file. Uh, you know, you want to be able to. So once again, you'll find that some of these are not enabled by default. And for you even to be able to test them, you have to be a tenant administrator or get the tenant administrator to kind of turn on uh, different things. OK, so given that now there are three different APIs that we care about. Uh, API entry points. You know, there's export to file in group. Now, the thing about this API that gets to be tricky, especially if you're kind of new to programming, is that it's asynchronous. So you say, go ahead and export. And it comes back and says, I'm done. But it's not done. It's just basically saying we've queued up a job to start. So when you call export to file in group, what you get back is an export ID that you can use to track an export job. So once you get back the export ID, you know, now you can call export, you know, get export to file status and group. You know, so the analogy here is that you're going on a vacation with your kids. It's going to take eight hours. And after 15 minutes, they start saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Uh, you know, so this is the, the method that you call to kind of see what progress has been made. You get back a status property that tells you, you know, whether it's completed successfully or it's failed, it's not started or it's running. You know, there's also something that you get back that tells you the percentage complete. Uh, some other neat things you get back um, once it's successful is it will give you the report name. You know, so if you're just dealing with the report ID, you don't have to kind of make an API call to look up what the report name is. You know, it's going to come back in metadata that gets returned to you. You also have um, the resource uh, right here, I'm going to kind of underline that, the resource file extension. And as I go through, I'll explain why it's really handy for you to get back in the API call, whether it's going to hand you, you know, a PNG file versus a zip file versus a PPTX file. Now, once you've started the job and you've, you know, you've discovered that it's succeeded and it's complete, then you call get file of export to file in group. Now, Here's kind of visually what's going to happen. My application is going to call, you know, export to file in group. And you can kind of see here that the URL you put together has to have the workspace ID and the report ID. And as you look down there, you, you can see that you're also kind of passing a JSON, JavaScript object notation body, you know, in this request to, you know, begin an export job. And then what happens is you get back this export ID. So you don't really know, you know, has the job started? Is it running? Is it complete? You know, so then we start calling this, you know, get export to file status in group. And, you know, once again, if I point out some of the things that you get, uh, you know, it can point out to you, you know, you're 50% complete. Uh, I find in most demos, it goes 0, 0, 0, 100. But let's say you had a paginated report that was 20 pages. Uh, that would give you a much you know, better idea of what percent complete would do, because then you'd get things back saying you're 10, 20, 30 you percent. Know, but generally, with one pagers, uh, it's going to say 0, 0, 0, 100. OK, you get back the report ID. You get back the report name. Uh, now, what happens you know, after we're successful? You know, so let's say I call this thing twice. And the first time, what is the status? It's running. So it doesn't have information about the job yet. 
But at some point, it's going to say succeeded. And now I want to kind of point out that here, not only will it tell me it succeeded, it's saying I've just created a PDF file versus a PNG file, you know, versus a PPTX file. So the reason I like this is that it gives you back a file stream, but you have to come up with a file name. What's the extension? Well, you just kind of grab it out of this result. And, you know, you can also see here that it also gives you back the uh, customer name. So while it's not required in my demos, I'm just taking the report name and putting it together with the extension. And then I don't have to worry about, you know, coming up with what the file name should be. Also, when you're all done and you see that, you know, you have, uh, you know, succeeded, you know, now what we can do is we can call get file uh, of export to file and group, very long file names, you know, but now you're able to get the file and what do you want to do? Save it to a SharePoint site, save it to OneDrive, uh, you know, upload it into Azure storage, you know, so you can basically do anything. You know, if you're the one writing the code, you have access to the file stream, you can do what you want. Now, here's the code right here. And what I'll do is, first of all, we'll just kind of take a walk through, and then we'll kind of see it live and see how it works. So once again, if I look at this uh, sample right here, um, let's go back here, and I'm going to go back to NuGet packages. And so what I want to show you here is that I'm using Microsoft.identity.client, and this allows me to get access tokens. That's a big topic in and of itself, so I'm not going to get you know, into that. Uh, but the code that I'm writing here uses the Microsoft Power BI API. You know, so this is what we call the Power BI .NET SDK. You know, it makes it so that, let's go here for a second. And if I say, you know, Power BI uh, REST API, uh, and now we kind of go look at the REST API. Great documentation. But this is for any developer, no matter what platform you're using. You know, so if I go to, um, you know, uh, export to file uh, in group, you know, this would kind of show me how you put together the URLs. It would also show me, you know, examples of, uh, you know, what to put into the uh, body. I'm going to go down here, see if we have some examples here at the bottom. Okay, I went too fast. I think I'm making everybody seasick. Uh, you know, but the idea is if I use this instead, it gets to be much easier because now I can start writing C sharp code. And so, you know, as a, for instance, you know, here is going to be my first example, uh, you know, where we're going to do the export and, you know, I call export to file and group, you know, and this takes care of putting together the URL, you know, I pass it the workspace ID, the report ID, um, you know, I pass it something called an export request. Now also, yeah, you know, let's go ahead and run this first example right here. Um, <clears throat> my wife's very jealous of my relationship with Fiddler. Uh, I love Fiddler because it allows me to kind of show these things. But, you know, let's go ahead uh, and run this right here. And so one of the things that, you know, I'm doing in the sample is, you know, first of all, let's figure out, you know, for the different groups that we have, um, you know, what are the group IDs? And then, you know, as I look at the different reports, you know, I basically find the report I want. You know, so here's kind of now where we're going to start. So you can kind of see that here is the export too. Now with Fiddler, what I can do is I can go down here and I can say, you know, what does the JSON look like? And so here's kind of the simplest thing where I'm going to say, you know, format PDF. Um, and then you have this Power BI report configuration. So, so once again, if you weren't using the .NET uh, SDK for the Power BI REST API, you know, you be putting together, you know, this kind of JSON body yourself. Now, when you do the export, and you can kind of see that, you know, it's got the URL, it's got the right things. If I go kind of take a look here, you know, at what comes back, uh, you know, it says 202, you know, so that's the uh, HTTP response code for not done, but we're doing something for you and it started, um, you know, so it's kind of accepted. If I look at the JSON here, you know, you can also see what's the report status. Okay, so now we're kind of down here, you know, with the uh, are we there yet? So what you can see here, you know, let's go back to this, uh, to the code one more time. And the first thing we do is we create this export report request object. 
And we're going to load that up as we go into demos with more and more stuff. Here we're starting, you know, just with baby steps. So the only thing we have to say, you know, is do we want a PDF, you know, versus a PowerPoint PPTX file? Uh, you know, next I call, you know, export to filing group. Okay. And then we want to capture the export ID. Now here you can kind of see that, uh, you know, here we're kind of the, we're mimicking the behavior of the kids in the car. Uh, so how often do you want to pull? You probably don't want to pull once a second, um, you know, but I'm polling, you know, once every 10 seconds, I'm asking the same thing, you know, get file of export and group. Um, and what you can see here is that, you know, the ID, you know, is kind of big and gnarly, uh, you know, for what the export is. Once again, if I go kind of all the way over here to the side, you can kind of see here's reports, uh, you know, here is the uh, report ID, and then here is exports, and there's this big long thing, which is the export ID. You know, so now what we're going to do, you know, after, uh, you know, we've got that is we're going to keep calling this. And let me put this back uh, over here. You know, the first time we call it, uh, you know, it's not running. And now it's running. And now it's running. And, you know, you can see as we go down here, you know, finally it will come back and say something, you know, other than running. And here it says succeeded. Note that if status equals error, it's done. And there will be some extra error information here that you'll be able to, to get to see, you know, why, you know, why did it fail? You know, and then finally over here, you know, here's the one call, you know, that actually gets the data back. And if I kind of just finish up with this code right here, you know, what you can see uh, is that, um, you know, after we look and we see that the, uh, well, I guess one thing I'll point out here is that we kind of go through this loop. And there are two things that are going to tell us that we're all done. You know, one is we're all done and we succeeded. Uh, and one is that we're all done, but we failed. You know, so the idea here is that, you know, after this, deal with failure, but now let's deal with success. And so kind of here's a case right here where you got this export back. You know, so once again, if I kind of, uh, you know, look at what we're uh, doing right here, you know, how do I get the export name? Uh, you know, I'm kind of grabbing the resource file extension right there, and that's kind of giving me the file name. And now I call this, you know, right here. If I go back uh, over here and we kind of take a look at this code, uh, you know, when I take a look at what is that, they're just giving me back a system.io.stream. And so now it's just regular .NET programming. You got a stream, save it to a file, you know, anywhere you see fit. You know, in this demo, all we're doing is kind of saving it, you know, to the, um, you know, the same folder where my code's running. And I just kind of wanted you to be able to kind of test things and kind of, you know, see how they, they go inside here. You know, just a little more about this sample, you know, and that is if I come up here, you know, you kind of see I've done a bunch of stuff. Uh, and now I'll kind of uncomment, you know, demo one uh, and I'll uh you know uncomment the next two you know so you know now i've created a pdf file and now i'm going to kind of run the exact same code except this time you know creating um, a pptx you know versus a png you know the other thing i want to do is kind of set expectations that this is run as a background task you know and so i find as you export reports uh and i'm using a p1 uh that you know, there's a certain startup time. It takes about 10 to 20 seconds per report. You know, you kind of wish it would happen in three or four seconds, but, um, you know, because it's a background task, you know, that's the kind of performance that, you know, I would expect, um, you know, that if you just kind of export report one and then report two and you're all on one thread, you know, kind of expecting about, uh, you know, 10 seconds uh, to, you know, maybe 20 seconds, you know, for standard reports. If I go back here, you know, what did we uh, just create? You know, so we have the uh, customer uh, sales. And if we look at customer sales, you know, here is a PDF file. And this is a multi-page report. You know, so what you can see here is that if you have a multi-page report, uh, you know, and you export it, it's going to give you a PDF file. 
you know, just think of it as kind of creating as a PNG file, but just adding the PNG files, you know, inside. If I, you know, do it as a PPTX file, you know, you can kind of see what I get, you know, inside of the report. And, you know, this is not an interactive report. You know, once again, it's really just think of it as it created PNGs for each page. It created a slide deck with this right number of slides and then just kind of copied this inside here. You know, but certainly while it's not an interactive Power BI report, you know, it can kind of serve as, uh, you know, a slideshow that you're going to show to, to management, something like that. Now, as I go through a couple more details here, you know, about this, um, you know, I just kind of showed you how to, you know, get the sample up and going. And now what I want to do is kind of spend a second to, to kind of differentiate some of the things we do with Power BI reports and then how things are different, you know, when I export paginated reports. So when I export a Power BI report, what um, you're going to see is that there is, you know, inside of the, um, the export request object, you know, we have this Power BI report configuration object. You know, so with Power BI reports, use the Power BI report configuration. With paginated reports, you know, you use a different one. So, you know, we can have different settings for each one. Um, now, you can see that if you're not using the, the .NET SDK, but you had to kind of, you know, create the uh, API calls yourself and format the JSON, that's what it would look like, you know, in the in the post request, you know, to start that. Uh, you kind of also see that with Power BI uh, reports, you have PDF as one option. Um, note that you also have PowerPoint. I showed you that. And then there's one thing that is not intuitive, or at least it wasn't intuitive for me. And that is when you decide that you want to export as a PNG file. When you export the report, if it has one page, it'll give you back a PNG file. But if it has two or more pages, it gives you back a zip file that contains the PNG files. So once again, you know, one of the things that I kind of liked about, you know, writing my code uh, to look like uh, this right here, you know, where we're just kind of dealing with what am I going to name the file? Is it a zip file or a PNG file? I don't know. I'm just going to ask the response I get back and let that tell me what the extension is. So it just let me write, you know, code that was more generic. Uh, you know, so once again, just remember that when you export a report as a PNG, if it only has one page, you know, it comes back as a zip, uh, as a PNG. If it has two or more, it comes back as a zip. Okay, great details. Now let's say that I want to export a Power BI report but I want to add some filtering. So, you know, here's kind of the code that we could write. So, you know, if I have one report and then I want to export it three different times, each one with a different set of filtering, you know, so kind of my report could be the template, yet I, you know, just change the, the filtering, you know, that gets to be pretty straight ahead to do, as you can see. One thing that was a little strange to me, I'll point out, is that when you do this, you create a list of export filters so for some reason, we have to create a list, but your list can't contain multiple items. You can only contain one side in there. So, you know, I think the API could make a little bit more sense. You know, so you can see that if you have, you know, two different things, you know, you only have one export filter, but you can and your criteria or, or your criteria together. Okay. Now, how about bookmarks? You know, so if you have a report with a bookmark, you know, you have kind of this one issue uh, where let's say that I go back to my report right here. Uh, and, you know, as I, uh, you know, go to uh, this report, uh, you know, pages have really silly names. You know, so when you use Power BI Desktop and you add a page, we create a nonsensible name and you can't change it. You know, same thing with bookmarks. You know, so if I go back here uh, and, you know, I say, you know, show more bookmarks uh, and then I get the bookmarks and I start kind of going to these, you can kind of see that 
you have bookmark GUID. You know, so you have to figure out, you know, what the bookmark IDs are. Okay, why we call it bookmark GUID here, I'm not sure. You know, but what I'm trying to show is that, you know, you can, you know, basically look at the report in the browser, navigate to a bookmark and find out what that ID is. And then you'd be able to export a report and whatever, um, you know, filtering, you know, is, is applied by that bookmark, it will be applied to the export. You know, so that can be a pretty handy thing to do. Um, now, next thing we want to look at uh, is you can also export individual pages. Yeah, so once again, if you just wanted to, you know, have one page, you could navigate to that page in the browser, you know, find out, you know, what is the section name, uh, and then you could basically just export that. You know, if you export one page as a PNG file, you know you're going to get back a PNG file, you know, not a zip uh, archive. Okay, now next thing we want to look at is you can also, uh, you know, import uh, export just a visual. Now, this gets to be a lot trickier, you know, because there's not a simple way to kind of figure out, you know, what visual names uh, are. Uh, you know, the best way to do it is with the Power BI uh, JavaScript API. And if you're saying, what the heck is that? Well, that's that's the problem, uh, is that it's there's not really a good way to get those. Uh, now, if you're a developer and you're doing Power BI embedding, you know, here I've kind of showed a little example, uh, you know, where we've registered event handlers. You know, so uh, if I uh, click on one of these, and actually, now I think about it, I can't just do it there, but I'm going to go and open another sample that I have. And the reason I'm going to open this sample you know, it's just to kind of show you some code right here. When I embed a report, you know, I can say I want to register event handlers. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is just kind of show you one approach that you could have, you know, to figure out what the visual IDs are. So here, once this thing starts up, um, you know, and now I'm going to go here. And now we're going to show this. And you can see this kind of demo code is simply going to walk through and register every event that's possible. Yeah, you know, so if you're into Power BI embedding, this you know, would probably be a good way to just kind of learn the land. But you can kind of see that once you embed a report, you have this idea of allowed events. Now we're going to just move through and register you know, each event. And when the event fires, I'm just going to write something to the console. You know, so here. Let's go back here and kind of navigate to another page. You can see that page change fires and rendered fires. Uh, but now, you know, let's say that I go to this page right here and I click on this, you know, we get a visual click event. And if I drill down here and you're saying, you gotta be kidding, Ted, is it really this painful? And there's nothing I can tell you to kind of show you an easier way to kind of get the visual name. And once again, visual names are created by Power BI Desktop. They're nonsensible and we give you no way to change them. Hopefully it won't be that way forever, but that's the way it is now. Okay, so if you have the intestinal fortitude to figure out what the visual IDs are, uh, you know, the point of uh, this slide right here is that you can export, you know, just the visual uh, and not worry about, you know, the surrounding report. And it will just kind of take that visual and expand it to, you know, basically the full size of a page for a PDF file or a PNG file. Okay, now as we're going to end this, we also want to talk about the limitations. You know, so what uh, we find is that there are customers that just say, okay, it's the first of the month. I now want to generate, a re you know, 10 reports for each of my users, and there's a thousand, so I need to generate 10,000 PDF files. And they find they just can't do that in an hour. Um, you know, so we have very definite throttling. This is all documented. You know, so with Power BI reports, you know, the throttling is put to 50 report pages per minute per capacity. Um, you know, this is something that is subject to change, you know, as we get feedback from customers. Um, you know, but one of the kind of strange things that this implies uh, is you get 50 report pages per minute per capacity. 
So does that mean two P1s are better than a P5? Kind of, it does. Um, you know, so we've kind of seen, you know, sometimes customers are spinning up A SKUs, uh, you know, just so they kind of have greater throughput. Um, now, other things to call out is that there are some visuals that we don't support and export right now. Uh, you know, so our uh, Python uh, and uncertified custom visuals are not supported. And, you know, the idea is that my company went to this, you know, extent to create our own custom visuals. Now things look great, but when I export, it just shows blank. So the good news is that we are working on this, you know, so basically allow exporting of uncertified custom visuals, which will also include our visuals and Python visuals. I suspect that work will be done sometime this summer. Um, you know, so expectation I could probably set would be September, uh, you know, and we'll be able to get rid of, you know, that inability to export our visuals, Python visuals, and, you know, custom built uh, ones that haven't gone through the certification process. Um, we can't export a report with a paginated report visual, but you can definitely export the paginated report itself. Okay, so there in this section, we just went through, you know, the PBIX style reports, Power BI standard reports. So now let's kind of see what's different about paginated reports. You know, so with a paginated report, you know, just like before, you have to specify the format. Remember with paginated reports, you know, we have about 10 available formats where the Power BI standard reports only gave you three. And also note that now we don't have a Power BI report configuration object, you know, but we have this thing, which is, you know, the paginated report configuration object. And so one of the things that, you know, we have is this very generic dictionary called format settings. And so there's just examples about if I want a paginated report and I want to programmatically set the, you know, height and width, I don't have to do that. I can use the width and height that are defined there, you know, but also if I have a 10 page report and I just want page seven, you know, start page seven and page seven. So, you know, this is also how you would get, you know, your page specificity if you didn't want to export, you know, the entire paginated report. Now, also you have a format of PDF and you also have a format of accessible PDF. I haven't tested this. I suspect that the Accessible PDF is more accessible, uh, but once again, um, you know, if you you have a lot of concern, you know, about accessibility, um, you know, you just basically change the, you know, the format, and your paginated report, you know, will export with the extra accessibility uh, options, whatever those may be. Okay, now how about if you have a paginated report that has parameters? You know, so this gets to be a fairly easy thing to do. You know, quite often we'll create a paginated report and we'll have a filter, you know, maybe so that the user can interact with the report. But, you know, when you're exporting, there's no user interaction. So you have to be able to kind of pass the parameters. Uh, and so if you have a multi-valued parameter, you know, a, a single value or multi-valued parameter, you know, it works. And there's just parameter values, you know, that you're able to put you know, inside of the paginated report configuration object. You know, so once again, you know, this is uh, no problem getting this supported. If you need to export, you know, something, uh, you know, for instance, let's go back over here. And, um, you know, what I want to show, not here, uh, but over here is, you know, here's something that we exported this paginated report. Uh, and so, you can kind of see that, what do we have? We just basically have data, you know, that is, you know, now uh, in Excel, there's no backward connection. You know, everything is exported. This is just a standalone, um, you know, Excel file. You know, so the idea is that if a customer wants something and they want to play around in Excel, and you don't want to have to worry about how do I connect this user back to the back end? It's no worries. You basically just kind of give them a file and say, here's an Excel file, you know, do whatever you, you want with it. Um, you know, so I think that can be, um, you know, for some scenarios or, you know, format a CBS or CSV and it just exports, you know, as a CSV file. Um, one other thing to note is that, you know, quite often I think we'll be exporting paginated reports as P1 
PDF, you know, that will by far to me be the most common scenario. But it also supports, you know, a bunch of other image such as TIFF, EMF, BMF, JPEG, GIF, you know, all those wonderful image formats from the 90s. Uh, remember that, you know, um, paginated reports are an older technology. Uh, but what's strange about this is that if you want to use one of these, you know, you don't say, for, look at this line right here. You don't say file format dot tiff. Instead, for all these, you say file format dot image, and then there's an output format. And this is just, you know, for legacy reasons of how, you know, the paginated report rendering engine works, you know, that you have to do this. And the other thing is that when you do this, you only get one page at a time. You know, so exporting a, um, you know, a 10 page paginated report as a TIFF, you know, you would have to export page one, then export page two. You know, so it's not recommended, just it's, it's an area that if you start going down, it's a bit of a rat hole. So you would really want to want TIFF over PDF, you know, to kind of go down this one particular area. Okay, now let's kind of finish up kind of talking about paginated report limitations. So what you're going to see is that while standard reports were 50 report pages per minute per capacity, this is 50 reports per minute per capacity. You know, so we're not putting a page limit here. That being said, you know, it's not going to have the same, you know, 50 reports per minute per capacity if one report has one page and another report has you know, 100 pages, uh, you know, so your mileage will vary, but you won't be able to go faster, you know, than 50 reports, you know, per minute per capacity. Also, you know, the export report uh, is limited to 60 minutes of a paginated report rendering process, you know, takes longer than that. The access token can't live that long, uh, you know, so that's going to be um, problematic. We have one annoying problem that we still haven't gotten rid of, and that exporting paginated reports bound to a Power BI data set works when you have a user identity, but does not work for service principles. Um, you know, so that's just an issue where I assume we'll fix this over the next year. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, we'll come back and here it gets, you know, fixed over the summer, you know, but if you're doing app owns data embedding, you know, that is kind of problematic. Um, and the last thing is you can export paginated reports, you know, with RLS with an effective identity, um, you know, but it requires the user is, you know, exists inside the same Azure AAD tenant, you know, as the service principal and, and the reports themselves. Okay, so, you know, I think that was a kind of a look at the API, uh, you know, doing, you know, kind of the bulk of what a lot of people need to do is they, you know, do exporting. I want to quickly go through this next section. Um, I see some questions here. I'm going to leave, you know, some time. Maybe I'll leave the last uh, five minutes to get it, get to these questions. You know, but you have this uh, issue where if you are using Apple's data embedding and you're using service principle, uh, you know, to basically embed the report, you know, how do you do export? And Export is not a client side API, it's a server side API. But what generally is going to happen is you're going to have some event, you know, whether it's through the report or someone clicks on a button outside the report, something's going to happen and your client side code will start running, but it can't issue, you know, a direct command to export the report. You know, so in general, what we're going to do, you know, is we're going to make an API call to the back end, and the back end will then have code to go ahead and you know export the report by calling the API. The other issue is that a user you know might go to a page and set the filter. You know, so let's say I go and I set my filtering for this year, um, you know, and you know France instead of you know all of Europe, and then I do the export job and I just get the regular report exported. You know, so there's something about pay attention to what the user has set and what the user has seen. And when you do the export, do the same job. So we have a very good way to do that. And that's the JavaScript API 
can call bookmarkmanager.capture. And it gets back this bookmark. You know, and the idea is that it's a binary piece of data that you should think of as a black box. You know, really it is a uh, compressed JSON file that has a whole bunch of filtering information. You know, but the idea is you can kind of see this client side code. You know, let's say someone clicks on a button to export a report. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna capture the bookmark. And then I'm gonna call my own API on the back end. Uh, you know, so let's say that my JavaScript front end now kind of calls, you know, to this, which is my back end and, you know, passes this object. You know, so here's the way it's gonna look. Client does something, you know, in the browser, you know, to say they want a file export, you know, whether it's the whole page, the whole report, just a visual. And so what you're able to do is you make a call from the client, you know, to a web API that you have running in the middle, you pass the bookmark state. Now, we wanna make this easy on the JavaScript API, so the whole time we're doing the work against the Power BI REST API, we're going to block returning the client's call. So what we can now do is call export to file and group. I'm making successive calls, you know, while, um, you know, the, the JavaScript call to my API is blocked, you know, but at one point I'm going to call get export to file status and group. I can now kind of get back the exported file to my web API in the middle tier and return that you know, back to the client. You know, so once again, if you're not into app on state embedding, what I just said was probably incredibly confusing. Uh, you know, if you are using app on state embedding, you know, I invite you to kind of reach out to me. Uh, if you can't find my email address, Reza will have it. You know, it's just uh, ted.patterson at microsoft.com and I can kind of help you through this. Uh, you know, but once again, you know, I kind of put together a sample so someone could say export this page as a PNG file, uh, you know, and we're able to kind of track what the user, uh, you know, had as far as settings go, you know, and be able to then just have the file kind of appear, you know, right in the user browser on the bottom, just like any other export scenario, you know, would give you. In the demo, I also kind of show, you know, exporting individual visuals, you know, by adding your own custom menu items you know to a visual in either the options menu or the, the context menu for visuals you know so you could also kind of start things in there and then you know give the ability for a user to go to one visual say export that and then just get back a png file or pdf file you know with just that inside there okay um if you're using paginated reports it's so much easier and why is that? Because when you embed a paginated report, it includes a toolbar where the user can just say export. And if you embed a paginated report and the user exports it, it's very, very fast. You know, it just takes a couple seconds, you know, for the PFD you know, file. So unfortunately, with regular Power BI reports, it's a lot more work. With paginated reports, you kind of get the ability to do things for free. No need to kind of create that backend web API. Um, Okay, this is kind of silly here. Um, in the United States, we have Thanksgiving, we eat turkeys, and they created this thing called a turduncan. And I guess when I put together this slide, I was just kind of trying to show that you, you know, you, you use paginated reports, and then you create a paginated report, you know, with a paginated report visual, and a second Power BI report visual. You have filtering with the slicers and the Power BI report that pass through, you know, to the paginated reports in the visuals, uh, and then you can build everything on a Power BI data set. And it's not just the Power BI paginated report that allows you to export, but if you add a paginated report visual to a regular report, it'll get that exact same uh, export menu. So the user can go right to the paginated report visual and just export you know, that paginated report. Okay. So I guess the moral of the story you know, is that paginated reports you know, give you a much easier way to export things because they just have a built-in menu that kind of does the work for free. Okay, I think we're gonna get late here. Um, I wanna spend at least the last five minutes looking at questions here. Um, I'll point you to that one video session um, that I showed at the beginning, kind of the Power BI dev camp, where I kind of did the same talk. You know, so I'll spend 10 minutes on this section, you know, but the idea is if you need to export the file, 
and you do a lot of work with Canvas apps, you know, or model driven apps and Power Automate, you know, they have some nice stuff that's built in, you know, so you don't have to write code, you know, but they have actions, you know, where you can just basically export either a Power BI report, you know, or a paginated report. Okay. And here's just another slide that in the session, I kind of get into a more complex uh, example because in Power Automate, you know, we have an export to file in group action, but you don't have things like get groups to figure out what workspaces or, uh, you know, what reports are in, in a particular workspace. You know, so you have to kind of use custom connectors today to get that information. So, you know, the demo got to be a lot more complicated, you know, but with that, um, I think at this point, you know, let's uh, kind of finish up with uh, questions. I think there might have been a question or two in the uh, chat window uh, yep, right there, here. There is one from Michael. Michael, do you want to turn on your microphone and talk about it? Uh, I think there was a really interesting talk. It was, um, I've looked at, I've been wanting to do this um, exporting PDF for a while now. I was just more curious around the the capacity. Do I need to be a, does the organization need to be a premium capacity or as a, can I have a user premium account? And No, you're going to find that a premium per user is not going to give you what you want. You know, so either, you know, you need basically, you know, Power BI premium, you know, so think of P SKUs, P1, P2, P3, uh, or EM SKUs, they're harder to get. They're cheaper, but you got to kind of commit to longer times and go through volume purchasing. Uh, you can also use A SKUs. Uh, you know, if you were going to use service principal, um, you know, A SKUs, but you have to use, you know, what I'm going to call premium capacity and not a premium per user capacity. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And there was a question from Ray, but uh, mentioned that this got answered, um, but there was then another thing about the token 60 minute limit can be broken um, using a loop in Power Automate. Do you want to talk about it, Ray? I can if you like. Um, right. So we're doing a fair bit of fair bit of work linking Power Automate to Power BI. So I kind of alluded to that in the first question I I asked. Um, so yeah, I'm one of the tragic victims of the uh, the graph ID and Power BI limits. Um, <laughs> I think it kind of it, it happened organically because I was trying to replicate the if you're familiar with the lineage view in Power in Power BI, um, we found that under certain circumstances with um, composite models, hybrid models, and some other denoting factor meant that the lineage view would not actually show correctly. Uh, so I started using the APIs to create my own lineage view. Um, and what I found was when I was connecting to specifically for reports, report subscriptions and report users, the the level of um, of depth, I guess, that it goes to, I, I started hitting all of the uh, the call limits within given time frame. So I exceeded what I was allowed to do within the hour and what I was allowed to do within the day and so on. Um, I had a chat to Microsoft about it. Um, and and it, one of the reasons was it started uh, affecting our paginated report exports. So uh, what we do with paginated reports is is specifically to, to generate a filtered CSV file uh, from a, a data set, which is then attached to email and sent to specific people to follow up on. Um, so there's there's data in there that they're chasing, but we want to limit what they receive via that email. Um, so yeah, it all kind of broke for me. So the conversation that I had with Microsoft was they were saying, well, what you'll need to do is is include some delays within the flow um, in order to try to circumvent the limits. But the question that I had was, you know, is there a, is there any kind of way of obtaining a higher you know, tenancy limit or, or session limit or so on, like even if I had to pay for it. But it sounds like you addressed it, Ted, when you said other customers are splitting across capacity. So it may be counterintuitive, but it may be smarter to acquire some of those cheaper P1s and so on. 
and dedicating them to to such what's, things. What's the issue? Is that if you combine everything at once, then the job takes longer than sixty minutes. But if you man, I've I've got some of these flights take hours to run just because there's there's just so much data getting returned. So that's what that I wrote in that second one. By... I've, I I built a uh, uh, so most of my flows have got an OAuth two loop where I'm constantly cycling like every 55 minutes and asking for a new bearer token and then storing that in a variable that the uh, the HTTP, you know, get or post will then use to connect. But you, you, did, you did answer it, I think, in the first one was to split it across capacities because the solution that I've been using thus far is just to generate more accounts. Yeah, but I think, uh, so if we're kind of throttling at the capacity level, not at the... Yeah. User level. Yeah, I think that you're not going to buy you anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. And I think that there's there's multiple moving parts happening here because it's not just a conversation around paginated report limits for me. It's also the fact that there's all these other flows going. Are those flows that are like building the data set beforehand? Uh, no. So what I what I've been using them for because Power BI, um, like. I would refer to it as Power BI native. So say for instance, when you're in powerbi.com and you schedule refreshes, um, the refresh timing limits are kind of limited. You can only do them, you know, every half an hour. Um, so where we've got, we've got a data flow as an example, we've got many of these, but we'll have a data flow that's connecting to a data source such as BigQuery or, or wherever. Um, and then doing a sequential refresh of the data set immediately afterwards. So we're, we're running the data flow, then running the data set, then hitting the paginated report, exporting what we need to CSV, attaching it to an email and sending it to somebody for as an example. Yeah. Um, but in that at the same time, I've got a number of, of other flows that are, you know, just doing simple things like refreshing sequentially data flows and data sets. And then the aforementioned lineage thing that I've been building. And that's right. probably the heavy hitter there. Cause it's, I, I've, I've ended up having to split it up into, into multiple workloads. And as I said, after talking to Microsoft, adding delays and so on. So to completely populate the lineage into a spreadsheet takes me about two days just because of how many uh, returned objects there are. And then I've got different um, JSON passes because there's arrays within arrays in the responses and so on. So, yeah, it gets pretty recursive. Sounds away. Arrays and arrays. Oh, it's good fun. Yeah. JSON validators are, are kind of bread and butter for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Living and breathing. Okay. And so, you know, if you have more, you, you know, feel free to follow up with me if there's something that, you know, I can. Well, I guess yeah, the only you know, the only question the that I would have to kind of look at something. You know, yeah, you know, the only question that out. I would have is, have you seen anything? I, I did notice that some of the APIs within the Microsoft suite allow you to purchase additional volumes or, or to breach limits by paying more money. You've, have you seen anything like that? Or is the only the only path forward to essentially dedicate some SKUs to just doing these functions? Well, so I'm not very up to speed on the, you know, how you would pay for kind of more throughput in a specific functionality. You know, I do see within the Power BI team, we're getting several customers that say, you know, I need this volume of reports in a small amount of time and I don't care yep. how much I pay. Yep. Operations. I can't they don't care. Capacities <laughs> to do that. You know, just allow me to pay you what it's worth. So, you know, so I think we're, we're starting to think through that, you know, we're, we're very much in the whiteboarding stage. You yep. don't have anything specific to, you know, tell you about. No. But, Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm not really sure I can add any more to that. You know, but as I said, if you know, if you have more questions or inquiries, I might be able to, you know, find PMs that might be able to provide more insight. Sure. So. Okay. Great. Well, I think we're at. Uh, yeah. Time here. What do you think, Reza? Uh, no, I think that was, yeah, the questions that you got covered. Awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate your time and thank you everyone for joining uh um you know, i had the question there yeah oh yeah was there okay the uh um, website that you had at the beginning could you post that in the chat please yeah it is uh https www.powerbi.com 
Bandcamp.net. And thank you. Make sure that that is the correct place. And it looks like that is the correct place. Yeah. So you know, once again, lots of deep dive sessions. Yeah. Because I once it's in the chat, then people will have access to the website if they can't get a hold of the video or something. But at least I'll see the chat. Right. And then, you know, if you go to that, you know, the other thing is that, you know, there's individual pages for different sessions. And so if I go to session 16, uh, you know, this one will kind of give you the links to the, you know, the demos that I was showing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll put this, you know, into the uh, chat window as well. I'm assuming, did you create this website? This is all me. Yes, this is a Power Apps portal uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Could, could be a little faster uh, on the startup page, but <laughs> can't eat, again. Add everything. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Ted, for posting the link and amazing presentation. As always, I'm sure a lot of people would uh, love it. Thank you for doing it, like late evening your time. Okay. No problem. I enjoyed doing it. After that. And I was very sincere when I said that I think you're the second smartest. <laughs> BI guy in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> Can I ask everybody to unmute for, for two seconds? And put your hands together and clap for Ted. <laughs> virtual clapping. <laughs> virtual thank clapping. you, thank you very much. I've never had virtual clapping before. <laughs> there you go, there see? You go. That's the New Zealand way. <laughs> Awesome stuff. Well, Great. Awesome. I'm sure I'll sure come back. Yeah, maybe uh, after you had a couple other speakers uh, next year or so, do another session. Yeah, hopefully we'll Love have you some time in person, like in the future. That would be good too. Right. Now that Thank I work you. for Microsoft, I don't have to pay for my flights. That is good. Yeah. Yes. So. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a good. Thanks time. everyone. Nice to meet everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. See you. Bye. See you soon, Risa. Thank you guys. Yep. Bye. Oh, and those links. <laughs>